What is up, everyone? Welcome back to the Fantastic Duo Show. We are back again here on another wonderful Tuesday. The holidays are here. Everyone's feeling fantastic. <laughs> feeling very merry right now, as you can see. Am I? I don't know. I mean, I've, I've never been like a big, big holiday person. Like, uh, only now that I'm like officially like living with my girlfriend, have I put up a tree. I haven't put up a tree since like 2013. You know what I mean? Really? <laughs> Get out of here. I would figure that you at least uh, would be in the Christmas spirit and you know um, be be merry and bright, just like today's episode that we're gonna be watching. Yeah, I'm merry. I'm, I'm merry and bright and stuff, but you know, like I think I'm just generally like that anyway. You know? Well, listen. <gasps> um, big round of applause for everybody in the in the chat room right now, specifically. Uh, uh your one true love there who's in the uh chat room with us today she's uh she came on the show she's here with us oh okay yeah, nice. so, yeah yeah so um we'll see we'll see we'll see what's uh what's what's gonna come up today she said that uh she made you marry she made you marry now you're married now you're married. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes she did yeah, yeah. yeah so. Uh, so it's good um no i mean I, I i like it you know what i mean it was it was fun dressing the tree and stuff so i enjoyed it um you, you, you guys could start your your traditions you know uh now that you're out there and whatnot yeah, yeah. exactly it's really exciting but talking about traditions man we just uh finished thanksgiving here and we're, you know we're moving along uh we're in our first uh full week of um of uh the the christmas season um as anybody anybody that's following you on social media could see that you put up your tree already we put up our decorations here at home like so let me let me ask you something any anything from your past that you remember doing as a kid growing up that uh maybe excited you um any toys that you were always looking forward to or was your christmas <laughs> kind of just like chill and whatnot like i'm i'm hispanic right so our christmases were always crazy yeah i mean you know i remember you know like when i was a kid like you know, break dancing was like real popular, you know, the beat street movies and the breaking movies were out in the theaters and stuff. And I wanted to be a break dancer. So I asked my mom to get me a like slab of linoleum, you know what I mean? So that you could do like the back spins and stuff like that. <laughs> so How did we not know this. Can you break some dance move? Do you need like, do you need the old school? Like, do you need the, 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 the broken down boxes on the floor? Uh, like I like I watch on movies where they just like you know yeah. break on those. I don't know. I mean, I, I I'm not really I'm not really that much of a break dancer. Really, I just liked it. it. Didn't mean I was actually good at it. You know what I mean? Um, so that was one thing. You know, um, but I just remember like what I used to do as a kid. It was horrible. Was I would wake up <laughs> way before everybody else, and I would go in and I would open up my presents and look what I already had and then close them back up. You know, because I just. Oh never... my God! You, yeah. you, my friend, were a terror then. Jesus. Asshole! I was an asshole. I was an asshole. Did you, yeah. did, you know, we grew up in a different time. Did your mom ever like you know put a little spanking on you for any of this stuff, or did she never find? <laughs> it? Are you kidding me? Well, she never used to spank me for that because she never actually caught me doing that. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, there was times back then when yeah, they used to put the whooping on us for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Hey, Tom yeah, was mom usually get a hold of like a fly swatter or a coat hanger, or she had this little rubber hose that was she would use on us. <laughs> love it, I love it. When it um, was when it was ass beating time. So, <laughs> the, not, uh, not, Tom, not, Tom, not, Tom wants to know if you could do the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So anyway, listen, guys, thank you all for being here again. You know, on on on. On a mid-afternoon show, you guys are awesome for always coming here and supporting, for uh, showing love, subbing. Um, yes, yeah, and thank you guys for that. And yeah. sorry for the past couple of weeks, I, for the past couple of shows, I wasn't available. I had a rough week at, with the dentist. I had to get in, like, a crazy root canal, like, you know, like one of my back teeth, like, you know, like cracked. So I needed to get a root canal and a new cap on it and stuff. So it took a couple of visits, and they happened to be on a Tuesday's um and i was like pretty rough pain so uh i just knew podcast wasn't going to work for me <laughs> so uh anyway but thank you guys for sticking around and hanging out and sorry about that and uh anyway so uh now we're back and now we're talking about 
the events of the week like what's going on so what's going on over there in america so am i well, understand that like it's like officially officially like he's finally conceded now right there's no he has no choice but to concede or something yeah so today's the day that the states have to hand in absolutely all of the things uh you know like the final tallies and whatever um so they can finally like stamp them a lot of other states have already sent them in so a lot of states have already conceded the new uh, vice president going into presidency um it's kind of crazy so today would be literally today's the most official last day for uh for the current president sitting president here in the united states man so it's kind of crazy people are kind of just like really excited to see what's what's come next and whatnot obviously you have the other side that are kind of upset and still talking about the fraud and all this other things like it's kind of it's it's kind of insane um that you know the balance here there's so many people fighting against each other instead of just like coming together dude like you know let's just let's just find a common goal and, and move forward especially with with covid how bad it is dude here in new jersey we're about to go into a uh, another lockout man over five thousand cases a day i just don't understand it you know yeah so, well we, we, like we, just, we just finished our lockdown you know what i mean like i've been literally been at home for like a whole month for the whole month of november and they finally let the lockdown up on december 2nd i think and uh, so that has allowed me to get back out to the comic book shops and stuff. So I just went to one last weekend and that was good. It was a good time. And then we've got, a, I've got another one this weekend as well. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it was, it was, I think it was very good timing on England's part to do that lockdown when they did, because everybody else is waiting too long, you know? Yeah. Everyone no. else probably should have went at the end of October and did their lockdown and everyone um you know the state seems like they're having to like now make up for that by doing it here in december instead yeah no and there's a lot of people here on the chat as well that are saying that we should definitely try some type of lockdown now listen you guys in the uk just got the new vaccine by i, I believe the pfizer vaccines out there so um they're they're already yeah, started yeah they're start, i think they're almost starting to distribute it you know what i mean so yeah, yeah. It's gonna happen so, soon. Yeah. Are you are you the type of person that would go for uh, uh, something like this up front, or would you you kind of like wait a little while before you um you jump on it? Well, I mean, you know, I would definitely try it, um, but I mean, I think just by 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 nature of things, I would have to wait a while anyway. So I'm just gonna ha I'm gonna see how it goes. You know what I mean? Because I it's not like they're gonna give it to me right away. You know, um, right. So. Uh, I, I, yeah, so I, if, if they were to give it to me now, I would, I would take it now, you know what I mean? But I think it probably won't happen, you know, for a while. So that being said, um, I'll be able to actually wait and see, you know, how, how it goes for these other people. Yeah. But so I Alex, Alex you mentioned that the oldest, oldest will get it first. Um, you can't just pay for it right away. Like some other people, you know, some other countries do where they just kind of like, uh, pay to play, you know, so uh, the oldest, the oldest of the old will get it first. So um, that means we'll be in line, Steve. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, since I'm, you know. since I'm 25, I don't have to, you know, <laughs> getting it for a long time. So I'm, uh, you know, it's fine though. I love it, man. Listen, moving forward, and let's let's talk about some better times. Um, well, actually, it's, not, it's not better times because the theaters are still closed. Um, big news out here, um, and they've they everybody's been talking about it. Um, HBO Max and uh, Warner Media have decided that they're going to take the entire 2021 catalog of theatrical releases and put them on HBO Max, upsetting. All of the directors who have worked very hard on these films, they want to know financially how this is going to work for them, right? Um, because when you put a movie in a theater, there's a couple things that happen, right? You, you get that extra income coming in uh, from the theater releases. And then secondly, um, you, also, you don't get pirated versions of the movie right away. So they're very scared right now that the minute this thing, their movies, like Wonder Woman 84 comes out uh, um, Christmas Day on HBO Max and in theaters. So they're releasing them on both, but they're afraid now you scalpers or whatever you want to call them. Piraters are going to have a perfect picture copy of Wonder Woman for anybody to watch for free online. So like it's it's so crazy right now, man. Christopher Nolan was like straight up called HBO Max a con. 
they 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 are the worst streaming service out of all of them. He's pissed, and he said that they should have at least told them beforehand so that they were able to kind of see if they wanted to pitch the the um the movies to Netflix or Apple yeah, Plus. It was a different distributor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because Pete, you know, Netflix is paying up and over two hundred and twenty million dollars for movies to be specifically on Netflix. So they were like, hello, like, you know, so it's it's kind of nuts, man. Um, It's like, let's put it this way. Let's say um, Beast of the Water, brand new hot movie, one of the hottest movies on Amazon Prime. It, it's coming out, right? It's, be, it's made by Amazon Studios. And Amazon t- calls Steve up and says, hey, buddy, um, we're going to put the movie up on, on streaming as opposed to uh, doing a theatrical release. Now, I do understand you, a lot of people can't go to theaters. They're limited. Most of them are closed, but I feel, and I want to get your opinion on this, Steve. I feel like this is just a temporary hold, obviously, until we get through what's happening here with the virus. And then once we're able to get back into theaters, don't, you know, you won't see them um, directly be released into streaming platforms unless they're putting like a premium price behind it, right? Like Mulan on Disney plus was like $30, to watch yeah. even though you're already paying for the service what is like in in your in your can we take get like your take on what you think like you think that was the right idea that they release them on, on both or they should have waited um maybe 90 days to say okay this is not working in theaters let's put this on on the streaming service to see how well it does yeah i mean yeah i mean sadly like you know you know just because of the you know circumstances i mean <clears throat> there's not a really a lot of choice, you know what I mean? It's like either you hold on to the movies until movie theaters can open back up again, which can be just as, you know, as costly as not getting it released, you know? And then the only other option is, you know, to put it on some kind of a streaming service, um, but one where somebody has to pay a premium for it. I mean, that's really the only way to do it if they want to try to make any of the money back, you know? But, you know, I mean... It's just it's just a fuck scenario, like all the way around. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this has just crushed this industry. You know what I mean? Um, for you know, like work, acting work has been slow for all of us in that sense. Um, you know, and even from the convention circuit as well too, from the convention side of it. You know, I mean, like it's basically like dried all of that revenue up for us as well um, as actors. Um, so. It, yeah, I mean, it's just a screwed situation. I mean, it's either make no movies at all um, until this thing is dead, um, which who knows when that will ever happen, uh, like fully. And, right. you know, two, the only other thing to do is to, to, to stream your movies. and But at a, you're going to take a loss. I mean, so, you know, either the production value is going to suffer, um, which, you know, we as consumers you know, will not like, you know, like who's going to want to watch a movie that's like cheaply made because it's the only way for the studio to recoup their money, you know, um, or you know, yet at the same time, we still want our entertainment. So I don't know. What is it? You can't ca- eat your cake and have it too, you know? So a hundred percent, I think, and you know, we're, uh, you know, unfortunately people got to understand we can't, um, uh, was that, uh, armchair quarterback this you know what i'm saying i understand like as somebody who who's a creator um i can only imagine when you are looking at the financials of things how this is going to impact you but listen at the end of the day uh warner media got your back they're going to pay you and they're going to pay the talent you know gal gata is that her name right gal gata the wonder woman gal gadot yeah 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 she's she's getting paid you know what i'm saying they secured her for a third movie so you know they're they're gonna they're gonna be good, man. They're gonna be good. Um, yeah, but I mean, you know, but a lot of that also depends, you know, on, uh, you know, if that other movie can make money though. I mean, it's like you can't just continue to keep paying these actors right. and not be able to make any kind of recoup any of your money back. I mean, like that that's not a, you know, that's not solid um, business practice. You know, so it's like they're guaranteeing her another movie, but not if this one doesn't make any money, you know what I mean? Like they were going to do a power, when they did the Power Rangers reboot, it was supposed to be a saga, you know what I mean? But when that first one flopped, you know, because they wouldn't listen to anything 
that any of the fans said. Damn it. Um, you know, um, yeah, they did. They, they couldn't make a sequel. You know, and then they end up having to sell. And now, now Hasbro is you know supposedly going to make a movie now. But um, you know, I hope they definitely do something different. Otherwise, if that one flops too, oh my god, the whole franchise would be in huge trouble. Um, a lot of people in the chat are saying, you know, that the the comeback, the combat, the comeback of the drive-ins, uh, they they are here and and yeah, uh, that's true. It's a way to keep people separate. I mean, you know, yeah. driving for so long, we're you know we're dead. We're a dead <laughs> field, you know. We can go down to the drive-in, you know, order some burgers and fries, and maybe go necking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going neck in with you, bro. <laughs> oh you stay God. on your side of the car. <laughs> I'm staying on my side of the car, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, a um, lot, of, lot of good comments here in the chat room. A lot of people talking about how the, again, the drive-ins have been making a comeback, drive-in movie theaters mm -hmm. that, you know, um, and yeah, so. and but, but I, I, well, no, Actually, to go back to one point, though, I will say, I mean, I can see how, like, you know, the directors who made these movies would be could be pissed that their only avenue available to them is you know this eight to hbo max you know what i mean because not i don't know how many people have hbo max you know what i mean because it's like i have hbo but i don't have hbo max if I want hbo max i think i have to pay more again you know for that um it's like a separate streaming you know so um i think you know that that it, it that's that's very limited, you know what I mean? Um, and HBO Max is probably like the least popular one, right? It is. Or it, like, is. it is. Like, they only got yeah. 8 million subscribers. Yeah. That's it. They only have 8 million subscribers in it. Um, you know, they're trying to capture a... I mean, they bought... So this is what they did. They 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 just did the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion on there um, to try to, you know... Which was, by the way, Steve, if you ever get a chance to, like, you know, find it, I'll find a link for you to look for it and, and see uh -huh. it. Very touching, extremely well done, dude. Like the yeah, good. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I would like to check it out. Yeah, so that one was good. They they took they spent like eight freaking eighty million dollars on taking Friends away from Netflix to put it on HBO Max. So they spent that much money on just Friends alone, dude. And then obviously, you know, they're putting there. They have um, all of the DC movies and DC television shows are now on there. Um, like they're. They got a pretty good library, but I don't think they're they don't the way that they were they introduced HBO Max just like they just dropped it. They didn't put any hype behind it or anything. Left them behind. Like Disney Plus did it well. Disney Plus told you a year ago, hey, this is what we're doing. If you like, why don't you um pre-order it? And when the year comes, you get a special price, right? When the yeah. year they launched, which they did. They launched it. It went great, great, and they have like sixty million subs. <laughs> you know, yeah. Disney made their money back tenfold. You know, yeah, so, and they got good shows on there, The Mandalorian and all that stuff. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're. Are you a big Star Wars fan, Steve? Yes, yes, I am. I I've been watching all of the Mandalorians on on Di on Disney Plus, and I watch all kinds of movies on Disney Plus. It's good. They have all the I've Marvel. Never, if, they have I've all the Marvel content on there as well too. I never watched Mandalorian. Uh, do you recommend it? I mean, I. Oh, it's, yeah, it's great. It's really good. Yeah. I mean, John Favreau, like, he knows what he's doing, you know? I mean, you know, he's, as you know, he's the one who directed all the Iron Mans and stuff, um, you know, and he was a good actor from before as well, and a good writer and a director and everything. Um, so he's pretty phenomenal. And, uh, yeah, so he's the uh, the mind behind um, The Mandalorian, and it's great. Wow. It's and he also, he, also directed, watch it. he also directed Elf, which is a great holiday favorite uh, at least for myself and for many, like it was a, it became a cult classic, I, I believe, uh, with Will okay. Ferrell and John Forever. Like again, he he directed that movie, and um, it's crazy because I I just saw the holiday movies that made us. I don't know if you watched that yet, or if or if they have it uh, to so see. which one? The holidays, the holiday movies that made us. You know, there's that show called The Toys That Made Us. Right, right, right. No, I haven't seen the holiday movies that made us. I haven't seen that yeah. one. Oh my God, the first one is Elf, and it's just so it goes so <laughs> in depth. And John Favreau, he's he's a brilliant man. I had no idea that he put he helped produce um the Avengers, uh, the Iron Man movies, like all this stuff. I'm like, whoa! Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm like, this, this yeah, he's on he's on top of it, man. I remember like the first time I ever saw him in anything was a movie called Swingers. It was him and Vince Vaughn. Yes. 
was a great movie, man. Like that movie was awesome. If anyone has not seen that movie, by the way, guys, I highly recommend it. It's another cult classic. And uh, John Favreau and Vince Vaughn, like Vince Vaughn is so skinny, you can't even believe like how, how young Vince Vaughn looks. But it's very, very cool. Very good movie. It's very yeah. funny. Yeah, um, Vince Vaughn, man, he I, I saw that he looked uh, he looked so so did John John they all they yeah both, they were both young and skinny they yeah. both looked so young man um, now they ballooned up nicely <laughs> yeah and you know what he has that other show called Chef from the movie that he made Chef I don't know if you've seen that one he it's so good man like he you're you're right a hundred percent the man is 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 pretty much a, a a genius behind the thing so yeah so here i know we spoke about this a couple months ago steve uh we were talking about how saved by the bell was rebooted um and yeah kind of like leave it alone what the hell but let me tell you something i i got the peacock network right which is nbc's own streaming mm -hmm. service everybody has it now right i i i got the seven days for free and i said you know what while i have this i'm gonna watch saved by the bell the new the new reboot let me tell you something, brother. It is not a reboot. It is a standalone show. This thing is amazing. They really? use, they use the entire old cast in such an amazing way uh, that touched the past and and mixed it with the present. And then it throws like the subtle things that they have done in the last twenty five years since they've been off the air. You know, um, wow. to kind of like never ceased. Yeah, so it you it feels like you never you never lost um time with them, right? But they own they focus on the old cast just enough for you to feel the nostalgia, but the new kids that are taking over on Saved by the Bell are insanely good, man. They're like two of them are live like 15 minutes down the street from me, man. It's insane. Two of the main wow. actors. Yeah, I, I was like, what the hell? It's so good. If you get a chance, um, again, if you can't find it over there, I'll send you the links. And um, take a look at it. Um, you and Alice, I would love to get you guys' opinion on what you guys think. Because the thing is, the show is so good, Steve. And, you know, we made fun. We were like, what the hell are they doing? I turned it on. I was hooked. Ten episodes. I'm like, <laughs> that's it? I need more. I need more. Well, what do you know? Uh, that's cool, man. Well, you know what? That's, that's good. You know what I mean? Because it's like... Just because it's my opinion doesn't mean it's the right one and doesn't necessarily mean that I'll be right in that opinion. So um, I think that uh, uh, I'm glad to hear that, you know, when something like, you know, when you expect it's going to be bad and then it turns out to be good, that's that's even better, you know? Yeah. So I'm glad everyone's here today. I'm glad everyone's talking in the chat, having a good time. We want again, thank you for being here. Thank you for um, for subbing, resubbing, sharing the show, listening to the podcast, downloading uh, the podcast. Uh, That's right, Twitches. Some... Yeah, Keep the, it going. the Twitch is here and the fantastic crew on the chat room. You guys are amazing and we love you for everything that you do, for continuing to come during the shows that Steve is not here and watching. Like last week, they were here. They just they were like, whatever, man. We we love this show. We want to be That's here. Good. My plan to face myself out is working perfectly. No, you're not. Oh, how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> need you, need you. Um, so let's talking about the 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 holiday season. Today we're gonna be watching um season three, episode sixteen, I believe. Let me I'm dreaming of a white ranger. Yes, yes. Oh my god. Yes, <laughs> season three, episode sixteen. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm dreaming of white ranger. white ranger i don't know why dude oh steve i wanted to sh i gotta send you something and i'm gonna send What's it to that? you when we're off the show some artist created a uh a drawing of a power ranger right um apparently the power ranger is one of your kids um is one of my kids yeah, so apparently in the Power Ranger universe, you had a child, and <laughs> his he is um he has the power of the ape, um, and he yeah he's the Orange Ranger, Mateo De Santos, son of Rocky De Santos. <laughs> Orange Ranger. I yeah. I love it. Who, who did I hook up with? The Yellow Ranger. I don't know, man. We're gonna do red, orange red and yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. You, <laughs> you and Karen. <laughs> oh man that's oh, hilarious oh, oh man i love it i love the it orange uh, ranger people are... <laughs> alice said oh my god how did i not know about mateo 
<laughs> my How did I not know about Mateo? How many other kids do I have that I don't know about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's so cool. What if? What if? Well, yeah, that would be so cool. What if if they write in your in in the comic books that you do meet your uh, predecessors, your kids take over as Rangers? That'd be so cool. I mean, like. Why not? Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, if you can right now, uh, open up your Netflix machines, um, wherever you, you get your Netflix from. Or if you get uh, to season three, episode 16, Dreaming season of a White season. Ranger. The Power Rangers are forced to save Christmas without their powers. Oh, crap. With, without their powers. So we're going to see what this uh, what this will entail, what this looks like. All right. Hold on. Give me one second. Let me fix this. Uh, Whatever are the Rangers going to do? I don't know, man. The Rangers are home alone. Do you meet Santa? Their powers. I would be so. It would be so cool if you met Santa in this episode. We will. We will find out right now. In about one minute, we're gonna be going live. I'll make sure that the uh, I the subtitles are on. I know people hate it when I play and I don't turn on the subtitles because <laughs> they can't read along with us. So um. Yeah, guys. So this should be fun. I hope you guys are are having a good time here with us. We do this every single Tuesday. Um, we're on, I think episode fifty two right now, which is pretty nuts on its own. Um, you know, and and you know we're chugging along, chugging along. You Rangers were lucky to meet Santa. They said in the chat room, Steve. Oh yeah, I can't remember. Did we meet Santa in this episode? Yeah, yeah, you guys actually went to the North Pole. Rito uh, went up there. Oh, and, is that the right? one we went to the North Pole? Okay, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. I remember that one now. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. I so shall we get it started? Yeah, so I'll let you count it down, and we'll press play as soon as you pr you say press All right, play. is everybody ready? Yes, we ready? We're about ready to watch the episode. Okay, Dreaming of a White Ranger in three, two, one. I am not skipping the intro. We're just going to go through and watch the, the whole thing. There's Ninja they, Warrior. They always have me in the sleeveless shirts, don't they? Always. The Ninjetis, uh, man. I wish you would have taken one home with you. Uh, yeah, I know. I just did not have that foresight, you know? When I, when I was on the show, I didn't have the foresight of saying this stuff is going to be collectible items in 20 years you know, know. We like eh. hindsight um, is 2020 bro you know who would ever thought you know yeah. that, that this would be i'll tell you what who i'm surprised by is jdf his collection is insane yeah he's got he's got oh my god he yeah. put you know he'll post stuff up on on instagram once in a while and i'm like how yeah. did this man even keep that for 25 years locked in a closet somewhere? I know. Well, he's got a really big house with a huge, huge room that's dedicated to all that stuff. Huge office. So, anyway. Right. Oh, hey, look, I don't have a sleeveless shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and please, anything that you remember, let us know about this episode. Oh, I really like Karen's braids from back then. They were so cool. They were on point. Yeah. Any of these kids were annoying? Were they like huge Power Ranger fans following you guys around, or were they like? No, no, no. Crap? I mean, they were they were actors. You know what I mean? They're the real professional little kids. You know, so they, they 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 didn't bother us or come up to us or anything like that. You know, they all knew that. You know, and plus they had to go to school while they were there, while they were there too. So for a long time, long periods of time, we didn't have to even see them. You know. I feel like you would have just shushed them away too and be like, hey, go, go. You got, you got class. Go. What are you doing here? <laughs> no. <laughs> nah. Not like that. We were cool with the kids. And I have no idea what's going on in this episode. Even though I've got the subtitles on. Oh, Ernie. R.I.P. Rich Janelli. I love that guy. Oh, my God. Don't we all? Ernie. He was so great. He had the best. He had the best jokes. Yeah, we used, to, we used to hang out, um, you know, when, when it wasn't our turn to be on set, we would hang out in our dressing rooms and we would listen to uh, the Jerky Boys. Wow. The CDs, the CDs from the Jerky Boys. 
we would listen to them and then we'd like re-imitate them so much and we even had everybody doing it like everyone even jdf would be like yeah okay i'll talk to you later then it's yeah all right fuck face you know shit like that we would be like that all the time uh it's very funny oh god you can't that slapstick comedy doesn't work uh in this day and age huh <laughs> yeah, the only people messing with them? oh my god yeah you can't prank call people anymore because they got caller ids now and cell phones and it's a federal <laughs> offense now they just come after you <laughs> so funny but uh yeah those guys were pretty good like they they had some pretty funny uh funny crank calls they made to people now this episode for anyone who's uh who's curious this episode actually aired on november 23rd 1995 um, and it, from what I hear it, or it, it was, uh, it aired out of order. There was a bunch of stuff that they were doing and whatnot. Oh my God. What is this mistletoe on a kid's show? Mm-hmm. Uh Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, good. They didn't do it. Nasty. <clears throat> Lord Zed, you look so cool. I know. Oh, there's Carla. Hey, Carla. Remember when his brain, his brain used to move inside? Yeah. Yeah. And then inside Rito, Revolto, um, the guy inside there is also the same guy who's inside the Black Ranger suit a lot. He was inside oh. there. Yeah. His name is uh, is Danny Wayne. See, that's the stuff we like to hear because, like, you know, obviously, and, and the guy inside the red, in, the guy inside the Z suit was the guy inside the red suit a lot. Ed Neal. So Rito and 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 Zed were the Black Ranger and the Red Ranger uh, stunt guys as well. That's cool. I mean that 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 costume is just insane. The Lord Zed will always like be yeah. crazy, man. Yeah. I wonder where that Lord Zed costume is. Well, you know, did you see that people were selling the the movie costumes? Yeah, they were selling them here in London. I actually reached out to those guys to try to like, you know, go and be part of the auction, yeah. you know? But uh they were really slow about getting back to me. They were like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And then they just wouldn't get back to me about the rest of the details. So I just oh said, fuck God. off. I would, I mean, I would, I would like love to get, get you that suit, man. Alice, yeah, sent, they, they were going for like 30 grand. Jesus. I think I have that in my closet. <laughs> yeah. Alice, don't be upset, but we're sending a whole uh, armored suit to your house, <laughs> to you <laughs> and Steve. <laughs> We just need Steve to walk around London with it. Mm -hmm. People will recognize you. They know who you are. <laughs> yeah, right. So Karen, Karen and Kimberly here. Karen and Kimberly. Karen, <laughs> I would just name one the real name and the other one their kayfabe name. <laughs> um, they're teaching the kids some Christmas carols. And by the way, she does play guitar, right? She's a musician herself. Well, Amy, yeah, she's a real musician. I think she has albums and stuff too, along with the movies that she directs and stuff. Crazy. Alice said that she's she's cool with it and she's in. So here's the North Pole. Did you remember where you filmed this? Yeah, we filmed this um, somewhere in LA. There's a building of like you know some kind of like like German um, uh, like like beer and and schnitzel place or whatever, and they had snow on top of the fake snow on top of it. And it was like that all the time. Um, I forget the name of, uh, I forget the name of the place that we were filming that at, but the building itself like looked like it was snowing all the time. So what they did was just added like lights and stuff on it to, uh, to really make it a lot of it, yeah. it look like North, North pole type thing. But it was just like a, the outside of it was just like a log cabin. Um, and with snow with like fake snow on top of it but yeah. inside i think it was like a restaurant and a bar and all that oh my god that's crazy yeah they want to they want to know they said you mean to tell us the north pole isn't real is what they're saying in the uh chat. yes are you are you breaking people's hearts right now steve damn it well i'm always 
just going to tell them it's not real? <laughs> how, well, how is this a big surprise? I don't know. Hey, Nanners, it's not real. Uh, they said, why didn't you guys shoot on location in the North Pole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Because I was spoiled, a spoiled boy in California, living in Southern California, and I do not want to go anywhere where it was snowing. Too cold. That's funny. Alice says that she's shocked that the North Pole is not real. <laughs> oh 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 almost kissed there did you see that what's that all about turn away? yeah the as soon as they were about to lock lips the uh oh, it's, it's, it's the zordon cock blocked her <laughs> zordon cock blocked him <laughs> oh my god that's funny wait the command center is dressed up too i don't remember this that's insane <laughs> that's funny i didn't remember that either they made it all festive. See, now it's so funny. Those, the, that to that scene to that scene, those were done on two different days. You know what I mean? Like we yeah. probably filmed those days like three or four or five days apart. You know? Yeah. But they put us in the same, same stuff, the same like, uh, you know, outfits and everything. So it looks like, you know, it was instantaneously like it happened in sequence. But it was all filmed out of order and then cut together later. Right. You know, it's crazy. Um, in Zio, you uh, cut your hair. You went with the uh, Eminem look. and with then the as Caesar do. The Caesar do. The, the Caesar do. And then as time passed by, it kept on going. Um, uh, Johnny grew his hair out. You yeah. Know, then he, he had the uh, the long hair. and Johnny went with the long, shaggly, shaggly yeah. hair, yeah. Did they ever have any input on your hairstyles like uh like hey don't cut your hair obviously jdf always had the ponytail right um, yeah i mean I, there was there was a we i mean you know we could have a little bit of say but the thing that we couldn't do is we couldn't just get our hair cut whenever we wanted you know what i mean like because uh, we would have to make sure that a certain cluster was over so that everything that we filmed would would match you know what i mean yes um, so that in that regard, um, you know, they had some control over when we could get our haircut and stuff. But the good thing about it is that, you know, is the makeup artist. I mean, for the longest time, the whole time I was there, I never went to a barber once. I had I had the makeup people always do, you know, style my hair, you know. So, um, you know, anytime I needed a haircut, I'd just go on set and get my haircut, you know. Right, right. So it was good. Nice. Yeah, that's a big thing like in uh like WWE from uh, from you know for years uh they don't you know they they kind of control like your hairstyles and tattoos yeah, control your image and everything, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so did, did you have your tattoos when you were there on the show? Did you have to cover anything up? Well, I mean, I had I had one tattoo, this like little tattoo that I got um, like it's a little cross that, but I've had that since I was a little kid. Um, and so, yeah, they would have to cover that one up anytime they put me in sleeveless stuff. But the other tattoos that I had were not visible. You mean all of season two and half of three <laughs> sleeveless Steve. Yeah. But JDF had a tattoo right here. Oh, he wow. Had, or that was his first one. And they always had to cover that up all the time. So now they're gonna, he got addicted gonna, to tattoos. Yeah, I saw that, man. It's <laughs> It went crazy. He just got new ones on his hands. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of nuts. So now they're... Um, these are all legit uh, little people, obviously, right? That they cast for this. Um, yeah, I think so. And then uh, you guys make it to the North Pole now. You're up there, a.k.a. the restaurant bar. Yeah, although I'm not sure, I can't remember if we filmed this inside that place or if that's a set that we created. So like the exterior was shot, you know, out 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 at that location, but then they they brought this look they but then we filmed something, we filmed all this. See like this is outside that location, but when you go inside, there was something different. 
like it, 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 inside of it was filmed inside of a set uh, actually on the lot you know what i mean yeah Rita looks like, so festive by the way huh <laughs> Rita looks so festive in his hat <laughs> yeah um who played the uh goldar and was he another ranger another stunt ranger? Uh, yeah i think actually um yeah so the guy who was in the goldar suit was a lot of times the same guy that was in the white ranger suit um and his name was he and he and when um so yeah i think he was the one that used to be inside the goldar suit i couldn't remember Oh, the tangos went for a spill. They said, uh, they said on the chat, um, was this the Santa before Tim Allen took over? <laughs> Jesus Christ, the chat room is, uh, <laughs> they're, they're on fire today. Wow, y'all got jokes. Y'all got jokes. Oh, look, we saved the day. You guys didn't even morph. Yeah. We didn't have our powers, but I don't know why. I think in the North Pole, nobody had there. Because you look at these guys, the bad guys. They, uh, Rito and, uh, and what's his face couldn't use theirs either. When you well, guys, how did they teleport? How did they teleport over there? I don't know. Did you see, uh, I think that was Zorna who teleported them out and threw them into the Z Command Center, whatever it's called, the palace. So the powers will work on the moon, but they won't work on the North Pole. I don't know. <laughs> It's anti-morphing. The VHS wow. has cat and extended scenes. Yes. Yes, Chris, you're right. The VH, the VHS, uh, the VHS version of this episode has a cat catastrophe in it for some reason. So like when you actually look up season three, episode 16 on Google, it'll actually link you. Uh, 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 there's some links to a catastrophe part one and two. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So well, I think that 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 catastrophe one is the is the episode right after this one. A ranger catastrophe. It's called. Ranger. No morphing. No Zord battles. What a different type of episode. No Japanese footage in this episode whatsoever. They said. Yeah. yeah. You guys took some toys with you to give away. Yeah, this one was shot completely on our sets. <clears throat> Look at this. The monsters actually give each other presents, guys. See, everybody gets into the Christmas spirit. <laughs> it is the magic of the North Pole. What's the world coming to? How funny. God, I, I forgot all about all these episodes. Oh, look, there's bulk of Santa Claus. I didn't realize, I didn't remember he did that. Look at this extreme close-up. Jeez. How funny. Look at Skull and his uh, elf. Or no, reindeer. Yeah, he's with the <laughs> reindeer. up the kid. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like, all, all those kids are, like, probably all bigger than all of us now. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> oh jesus is that the star david in the back you guys were really political look at that you guys had uh, uh, oh well yeah there. absolutely they got the dreidel and and the uh the ohanica decos in there as well too politically I'm correct how many kwanzaa ones in there it is super politically correct this episode i love it you have a little bit of everything <laughs> yes yeah. the, the set is dressed up really nice Everyone's giving each other gifts and presents. Yep. Here's the feel good story of, of the episode. The dad comes back. Yep. You know, he loves her. My God. Yeah. I can't remember who this girl was. That was then the episode. I don't remember her name. Apparently there's a Zio uh, special Christmas special as well. We yeah, have, I think so. Right, we're going to have to do that one next week or, or before Christmas is over. They yeah, said there's a special cover for holidays. Uh, yeah, because that was, that, yeah, I remember that was one. 
because the Rangers were like fighting with each other or something. They were arguing with each other on Christmas, I think. That was the one. And in Zio, Tanya explains Kwanzaa. Ah, I Correct. see. Oh, right. look at Bulk and Skull. They're touched by the spirit of Christmas. Look at his earrings. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Oh. If that that was like really awkward, like she kind of like pulled him, like, come here, you sucker. Give me them lips. <laughs> yeah. Is that supposed to be her mom? Yeah. And that's the guy she's dating from the, the, the painter. Right. Man, it would be so cool to have all these scripts in on hand. Just kind of like go through them and see what the hell they were. Did you guys do table reads? Like how was your, how was your week constructed? Yeah, no, we didn't really have to do table reads. They would send us the scripts and it was our job to read them on our own. And oh, then, really? yeah. Wow. So you guys just met up on shooting day mm -hmm. and, and Hey, uh, you know, we're setting up, we're blocking for this scene. Um, Know your damn lines, basically. Yep. Wow. Pretty That's much. Crazy. They really threw you guys into the wolves. You did a great job, by the way, of like <laughs> keeping it together. I would have been like, what? Wait a second. It was pretty confusing sometimes. I'm sure. Uh, is this right after the movie? They uh, Awkward Gamer asked. Uh, it was after the movie, yes, but it, I, I think it was a several episodes after the transition of, you know, the ninja encounter right. stuff for the move, or not the ninja encounter, but the, whatever, the ninja transformation or whatever. Um, another thing here they said too is, uh, you guys broke the fourth wall. You said Mary we looked, Christmas, that we looked at the people in camera. camera yeah 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 and then you. they have all the outtakes <laughs> i can't believe like they they put this poor squeaky voice on that chick those hairstyles back then i still can't believe those were the 90s they're saying in the in the chat yeah right <laughs> said, steve you rocked that episode Right. That was hardly in that episode. I said like one line or two lines. Hey, those were the two most amazing lines I've heard. Wow. So yeah, so uh, here we go. So as as the kid is, uh, they said he has the kid was reading that very long wish list for bulk. The items written on the list did not match what he was, what the kid was reading. So like as he's going through the paper. <laughs> You know, you can still see, you can see the words because he's he's putting the paper through. So oh, the, really? the kid did a pretty good job, I want to say, <laughs> of remembering his lines. If you think huh. about, it, you know, um, they said at the end of the episode, here we go. Yeah. So uh, you guys all looked at the camera and said, Merry Christmas. Uh -huh. uh, da, 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 yeah. And OK, this episode premiered out of order. Six episodes after Kimberly left Angel Grove. Holy crap. Well, that's yeah. weird. Yeah, they must have. They must have somehow, you know, you know, forgot to uh, add that one, or maybe you know, they we just didn't have enough footage to put out. But we had to shoot that Christmas one early. You know what I mean? Yeah, it says here uh, for numerous additional reasons the episode may or may not exist in the show continuity properly at all. Wow. Learn something new every single day here on the Fantastic Duo show. Yeah. Amazing. I honestly don't remember when it aired compared to when we were filming it. You know what I mean? Right. Yes. Right, right. Oh. So um, really quickly, before we uh, we end the show, here we've got about a couple of minutes left here, it's about eight, eight minutes or so. Um, do you have anything on your Christmas wish list for this year, Steve? Anything? I mean, you already got your wish. You're there with Alice. Um, yeah, I mean, I, ultimately, you know, I, I got the best thing. I was, I was able to, I was able to get here, you know, before there was any kind of like travel bans or anything like that. And, um, you know, so now I'm, 
I'm just going to enjoy my time in London, at least for a couple of years, you know, so I'm, I'm good. But I don't really have Christmas wish lists, bro. I don't really like people to get me presents or to give me gifts or anything like that. Not on the holidays anyway, you know. Um, I've never been one who's been big on that. Uh, like I said, I'm putting up a tree for the first time in, you know, whatever, seven, eight years, you know. <laughs> That's crazy. So uh, what about you, man? Yeah, man. So like for me, I'm just like, I'm just chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm, you want I'm, a Nintendo 64? <laughs> I want a Nintendo 64. I want a Sega 32, Sega Genesis 32X. Nah, man, I'm just, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm the same way. I, I have another question for you. Um, the, the holidays over there, are they in, how different are they from the American holidays here? I know you've only been there for a short amount of time, but from what you've seen. Right. But I've been here lots of times. I mean, like Halloween, they don't celebrate Halloween the same way here that they do right. over there. I mean, they have it, but not, not as many people get dressed up or go trick or treating or anything. As far as I know, um, they don't have Thanksgiving here. Right. Uh, you know, and the Christmas is the same, though. But the one thing they do here differently is after the day after Christmas, they have the Boxing Day, which is like, you know, where you, I think, like, go and, like, give, like, back things you didn't want or something like that. Yeah. So, got it. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember exactly what Boxing Day is, but it's not two people standing in a ring and punching each other. <laughs> do you guys do... um uh, again, it's it's over here, you know, Christmas Eve is huge. Um, anything from Alice, like letting you know if Christmas Eve is big over there or, or you know, have you seen it yourself? Is it as big as it is here in the United Christmas, States? Christmas, more, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas Eve and Christmas are the same here as they are in America. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so cool. So you guys party hard just like we do here. Um, yeah. I think, I think Although it's... This year, I don't know how hard anybody's going to be partying. I mean, like, uh, lots of stuff is, like, closed and stuff, you know? Yeah, so, yeah idea but see last year last year alice and i went to vienna for christmas Ooh. we were in Austria, so that was actually very cool um really nice nice way to spend christmas um so this year though we're gonna stay local but for me still it's it's still great now, christmas now, alice says that some people party for about five days for christmas over there like it's a big event um they do like five straight days of of uh christmas. well yeah because they have the christmas markets here that's the one thing that they have here that they don't have over there in europe especially they have the christmas markets where well they, they have the markets but everybody goes and drinks too while they're shopping and stuff you know um, Damn, so cool vienna yeah like every the big thing here is to drink mulled wine like which is like warm wine like wine cider it's really good and you just get wasted off of it so uh, so here we go smiley one of our mods and, and longtime uh, supporters of the show says according to imdb the little girl was played by tracy lynn cruz who becomes the yellow in space ranger that is not true that's what they said on imdb she says she's that, doing research on that thousand percent not true tracy IMDb lynn cruz tracy lynn wrong. cruz was already older tracy lynn cruz actually Actually, I think Tracy Lynn Cruz was in that episode. She was an extra. So that's what she started out on Power Rangers. She started oh, out as an extra. That's crazy. Yeah. So she yeah, was she started there. out as an extra. And then she later became a Power Ranger. But she was already fully grown up. Like, she was already, like, you know, in her 20s at that point. Yeah, because if you think about it, correct. Yeah, that's why she says she's going to look more into it because there's no way that could happen because, again, but, it's but super now that you mention it, I think that we first met Tracy Lynn Cruz for the first time on the, ep on the set of that Christmas episode because she was in the background. So maybe you can look for her there. You might find her. She was an extra on that episode. That's so crazy. Can you imagine that? Like, you go from being an extra to being, like, you know, one of the, you know, main power rangers uh in the series uh mm -hmm. later on which by the way that the the in space series saved the the season from ending because from what i read that that you that was supposed to be like the end of power rangers and obviously here we are 20 28 years later <laughs> still doing, doing this um really quick ladies and gentlemen if uh if you don't know you can follow us on the fantastic duo show uh everything just go to fantastic duo show.com and fantastic all show.
yeah. everything. Everything's going to come out. Fantastic Duo Show. You're going to see Steve's links. You're going to see my links. Um, if you're in the UK, please support Steve and uh, and head out to the uh, to the comic shops. It also helps the comic shops out because, you know, they're, they're hurting. They're hurting, yeah. man. That's um, the thing, too, guys. Please come out for those comic book shops. We'll be at, at Sin City Comics uh, this weekend in uh newport um which is in near wales um so if you guys get the chance uh and you're in that area and you see this definitely come 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 see me down there and uh support the local shop as well um and um then i'm not sure i'm still trying still up in the air right now but i might go back to the toy fair the first toy fair that i did when i came here to the uk a couple months ago we might have another um, event at the toy fair on the 19th, which will be like the last day that any shops are going to be open. So wow. um, we'll keep you, uh, keep everybody posted on that. And Alice said, and of course you get to see me. <laughs> She's <laughs> right. Well, well, that, yeah, that, I, yeah, I mean that, that's like my favorite part of every day, not just the holidays. <laughs> She said, uh, show support. She, she buys stuff, ridiculous stuff at, the, at these toy fairs. Toy fairs are awesome, by the way, guys. So, yeah, so head over to the fantasticduoshow.com. You can find absolutely everything. Fantastic Duo Show will be there. A little sneak peek for uh, next Tuesday. Um, I'd like to perhaps run down some some movies next week, some of the, my top 10 favorite uh, holiday movies and kind of. Some oh, of yes, yes. We'll talk about that for sure top 10 uh christmas movies we can definitely do that yeah i'm uh, sure you've seen plenty uh already people are talking about die hard <laughs> i mean oh well of course you gotta watch die hard die hard is great <laughs> Bat batman returns wow so yeah so save save those ideas for next week and then um uh I, hold on i just got a question here will you guys be on christmas eve or christmas Day? when is chris is does christmas eve land on a tuesday this year, let me see. Hold on a second before I get out of here. Uh, let me check. For right. You. Well, that yeah, that Chris, whatever that Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, I think whatever no, the Tuesday. Um, that's Tuesday the twenty second. No, yeah, it's a Thursday and Friday. Um, as far as that Tuesday and Friday, I might Steve might not, but I might I might be streaming games just because I like to you know be on here right. on the channel gaming. Yeah, so, I mean. Uh, yeah, it, I think it's just going to depend, but we will let you know. We will let you know if I'll do the 22nd or not. Most likely, probably will, but um, we'll keep you posted. Yeah, that's we'll a big week for a lot of people, guys. So um, if, if even if Steve's not on, I'll throw something together. Um, I'm also looking to do a, uh, a, a holiday movie watch along night with all of the subs where we come on and, and watch a, a, a holiday movie of, of their choice. I'll, I'll put out like a little poll list of what they want to what they want. We got a lot of big things planned here for the channel and, and I'm always keeping everyone entertained. So um, I, I'm hoping that they that they see the hard work we're putting in here still 52 episodes later. Uh, this show is still rocking and bobbing and all that good stuff. Um, by the way, Elf is the best Christmas movie out there uh, next to a Christmas story. <laughs> a Christmas story for me and Elf go hand in hand. Um, so, yeah. So, Steve, man, uh, again, awesome show. I, I love yeah, having yeah. you. Good, good, to, talk good about... to see you guys again. Thank you, everyone out in the Twitch universe for staying with us. And, uh, and thanks for hanging out with us this hour and enjoying the uh, episode of Dreaming of a White Ranger and all that stuff. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next week where we'll watch the Zeo Christmas special. Uh, and then we'll uh, and then we'll talk some more about um, our favorite movies and whatnot. So uh, anyway, guys, on behalf of myself and my host, co-host, actually he should more like the host, and I'm the co-host now. Um, uh, we want to thank you guys for watching, and may the power protect you. Have a good one, guys.